Shout to God with a voice of triumph. He's still moving. He's still proving just how great he is. Welcome to day 95 of season 21. Something like that. Amazing. Are you glad to be the house of the Lord? Can you just lift your voice and pray in the spirit right now? Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your presence this evening. We bless you. Lift your voice. I can't hear you. Pray a little louder. A little more intensely. He loves to hear your voice. Oh, yes, we came to pray. Lift your voice and pray. Saints. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. I don't hear you church I don't hear you I don't hear you I need some real prayer people in this place thank you Jesus oh, yes. we lift our voice to you because you are wonderful we bless your name we bless your name we exalt you yes we do yes we do yes we do there is nothing impossible with you Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this evening. Yes, Lord. Thank you that every chain is broken. Every sickness is healed. Every condition is changed. Yes, Lord. And that there is nothing too hard for you. We thank you that this marks the end of strife yes, and trial. Yes, Lord. And the beginning of grace. Yes. Divine enablement. Yes, Lord. Ability. Yes, Father. That comes from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give me Mark 11, verse 22. Oh, as we continue to pray, we are praying. Oh, season yes. 21 is a prayer season. Mark 11, 20, let's read together. So Jesus, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in who? In God. Did he say have faith in prayer? No. Have faith in fasting? No. Have faith in your seed? No. Have faith in tithing? No. Have faith in the pastor? No. Have faith in who? Oh, yes. Some of you, you are walking into a season of the greatest level of victory you have ever witnessed in your life. Have faith in God. God. Say, God, God, I have faith in you. I have faith in you. Amen. Next Amen. verse. And says, for assuredly, I said to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the things he says will be done, what will happen? He will have whatever he says. Does he say he will have whatever he thinks? No. Does he say he will have whatever he desires? Does he say he will have whatever he cried about? No. Does he say he will have whatever he's worried about? No. What shall he say? What shall he have? Whatever he says. Ah. This is a week of boldness. Oh, yes. The things you've been fearing to say. Because you think if it doesn't happen, I will be ashamed. I'm telling you, the devil is going to be ashamed. Oh, because you shall decree a thing and it shall 
be. Open your mouth right now and start speaking into place. Some of the things. Some of the things. Oh, yes. I don't hear you praying, worship prophets. I don't hear you praying. Let this house be lit with prayer. Pray fervently. Pray loudly. Louder, 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 louder. You shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. You shall have. You can turn it around right now. Turn it around right now. Turn it around right now. Oh, yes. Every mountain is crumbling. The mountain of sickness is crumbling. The mountain of death is crumbling. The mountain of failure is crumbling. Failed relationships are crumbling. You shall have it. You shall have that child. You shall have a long life. Your business will work out. Your ministry will grow. You shall have a mega church. You shall have a lifelong marriage. You shall have everything that God says you shall have. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Your children are taught of the Lord. Your children shall serve the Lord. Your children shall be righteous. You shall have impact. You shall not die young. None of the years allotted to you shall be stolen. You shall have all the money you need and much more. You shall have whatever you say. Open your mouth, people. I need some violent prayer people in this house. Stop being casual with the enemy. You shall have that marriage. Yes, you shall have it. You shall have whatever you say. You shall have the salvation. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. He's still moving, he's still moving, he's still proving just how great is, how great it is. Let me hear you sing it. It's still proving, it's still proving just how great it is, is. how great it is. Yeah. 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 It's still moving, it's still proving, it's still proving just how great it is, how great it is. It's still moving, it's still proving. Anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Not terminal sickness, nothing is too hard for the Lord. You still pray? Oh yes. Are you receiving victory? Yes. Are you receiving answers? Yes. Mark eleven twenty four, please, quickly. Therefore, I say to you, I say to you 
that some of the things you ask. Okay. The easy things you ask. Okay. The big things you ask. Okay. The scientifically possible things that you ask. What does he say? Whatever things you ask when you pray. Believe that in about a year's time. No, no, no. Believe that in six months time. Believe that next week. What does he say? Believe that you have believe that you receive them as you're praying and you will have them they will manifest when you believe at the point of prayer that you receive them you're doing the right thing you're doing the correct thing because if you believe that you receive them our response is praise and thanksgiving. So open your mouth and give thanks to God Jesus. in your own words and tell Him about His kindness and His goodness. Oh, yes. Go ahead and lift your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Because you're kind. So, Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. For season 21. Yes, Father. The season of mighty miracles. Yes, Lord. Season of signs and wonders. Right now, we declare that this house, this yes. room, this yes. space yes, Lord. is a miracle house. Yes, Lord. Is a miracle house. Yes, Lord. And that it doesn't matter what has not worked before, it works now. Bodies work now. Marriages work now. Relationships work now. Finances work now. Businesses work now. Churches work now. Missional communities are working now. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We exalt you. Because you're good. Yes. And your mercy endures forever. And all the people say that's a weak amen. All the people say, let me hear someone who sounds like you have your miracle already. Yeah. 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 Now you may have tried politeness and it didn't yield the result. You may have tried false humility and nothing changed. This is a week of bulldog faith. Yeah. This week is for those who say enough is enough. I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm going away with my answer to my prayer. Whether what or what am I, I can I can I hear some bulldog faith people in the heart hey! no 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 if you are used to those prayer meetings where people are not sure whether they believe in God or not 
They are saying, dear Lord God, sir, what, what? No, 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 no. Here we have come to receive answers to prayer. And we are not shy about it. Also, you may be one of those, maybe you have been in a religious environment where they told you, you know, no, 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 actually God just cares about his own glory, doesn't care about your things. So maybe he's putting you in that state of pain for his own glory. No, please. Yeah, God has better ways of getting glory than putting you in pain. So I'm here to announce an end to every siege, every chain, every demon, every... every addiction, every sickness, I, every weak condition, every witch, every wizard, <laughs> uh, any kind of barrenness in your life, I expel it in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what area it is manifesting. Amen. Are you ready for faith week? Are you sure? Oh yeah. Now we are going to start off by giving a proper offering to God. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that give, Luke 6.38 you can sit and organize your offering as I share with you the scripture. Give and it will be given to you. I'm, you need to read the scripture, actually. Because I'm going to show you something that you thought you knew. Amen. Are the people this side ready to read the scripture? Okay. Give. It will be given to you. Uh huh. Good measure. Press down. Check it together what's going on with the running over will be put for with the same measure it will be measured. I told you I'm going to show you something. Why are you assuming that you already know the scripture? Because some of you are looking like you know the scripture. And yet I want to show you something. Where is my offering? I gave it to someone around here. I want you to get an envelope. Don't just put your offering. Put it in an envelope. And I want you to write on that envelope what you want God to do for you. Yeah, this is an offering. You don't have to put your name. It's tithe where you put your name or tithe number. Just write what you want God to do for you. Don't put your name because the thing you want God to do for you, you may not want to put your name. I hope it's scriptural and it's one of the things Jesus died for. Hey. It is well. Are you writing what you want God to do for you? Don't write. No one is going to be. This, these are not prayer requests. No one is going to go through the envelope to pray. The answer is. The answer is already there. Once you write, that's it. Some people's hands are still up. After you've written, I'll show you Luke 638. This week I'm going to preach the same sermon four times. Yeah, every day it's the same message. Now, let me see you not coming tomorrow because you think that you have heard the message. Don't think like that. Don't tempt God to hold your, your miracle until Friday. When 
the other days could be days of thanksgiving. says what give some of you are not looking you look at, look at me the scripture you already know it what does it say give how many times does it say give once okay how many times does it hint at the results okay one is it will be given to you. That's one. Good measure. That's two. Pressed down. That's three. Shaken together. That's four. Running over. That's five. Put into your bosom. Verse six. That's six. That you use. It will be measured back to you seven times. You will never outgive God. This was Jesus. And I know some of you who think you know more theology, you're going to say you were talking about justice. Mom. It's a biblical principle. It's repeated everywhere in the Bible. Give. Huh? Like one arrow out, seven in. Give. Huh? will be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Rank of God. Put into your bosom. Measure back to you. Now, tomorrow's offering and the other days, you need to remember Luke 6, 38. Because you may have done your offering with the idea that it is give and it will be given to you. Finished. <laughs> it's like give, then poofs, poofs. it's like you throw one punch, then they hit you seven. If you're a boxer, that would be very bad. But this time it's not punches. It's like you give okay. One cup of juice, then they bang you seven. I was going to say cake, then I realized it may not work for some people. Hold your envelope. Thank you, Father, for all the miracles you've done. Whatever is written on these envelopes, Father, I join my faith 
with that of my friends, including those who are giving online. And we declare, according to Mark 11, that this mountain has moved and that the answers have come. And that we will testify greatly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give your offering. Let's welcome the worship team.
Let's appreciate the worship team. Wow. Powerful song. Powerful song because it is scriptural. Amen. So, Father, thank you for the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Tonight, we declare our lives will never be the same as we sit under your word. Uh, every kind of sickness is healed. Every kind of condition is changed. All oppression ceases right now because the entrance of your word brings light. Thank you, Father. And there is elevation because you say, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please have your seats. I'd like to welcome all the pastors and all the network leaders, especially the network leader of the Champions Network, who is also the pastor of worship of Esnalia, who also happens to be my roommate. You can sit down. Even those of you who don't like it, you can sit down. Hey! This week I want us to talk about the essentials of faith. Essentials of faith. First of all, the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you have faith, you don't belong in the defeated camp at all. You have no position there, you have no place there, and you have no business there. Why? Because this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. In other words, if you have faith, you have automatically overcome the world. Tell your neighbor, welcome overcomer. <laughs> the problem with being online is you may not have a neighbor, <clears throat> but it is well. Those who are joining us from the other 34 Places where we are streaming the service, you're welcome. And those who are online and in other countries, other cities, you're blessed. You shall miss nothing. Amen. So, you know, life can sometimes try to be funny. But you can turn things on it. And you go from victory to victory to victory to victory. How? Through faith. I was listening to uh, Kenneth Hagin this morning and in that message which should have been somewhere when he was maybe in his 70s he said he hadn't fallen sick, sick for 55 years <clears throat> you say I'm there <laughs> faith, faith what's going on now faith yeah, 55 years. And I want you to join the company of those who refuse to participate in things like sickness, uh, lack, I mean, not like L-U-C-K, I mean L-S-C-K. You know, depression, all those annoying things. They are completely unnecessary. Why? Because there is a victory that is not overcoming, that it's not, it will overcome, but has overcome the world, even our faith. Ah! You see, we've been sold a thing. Hmm? You may want, unless you're using your phone for notes, it will not help you very much at this point. Yeah, it will only rob you of the word of God. But you may be using it for notes, which is okay. We've been sold the idea that you have to win sometimes and lose sometimes. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus didn't win sometimes and lose sometimes. He was always winning. The only time when he had to die, he said, I laid down my life. He, it was, he said, 
these guys can't stop me from living and yet I have to die for them so let me lay it down willingly and he lay it down so that he can take it again now that's your elder brother that's the family member for so those who have been telling us about all your other uncles that one <laughs> that's the one you hadn't told us about that's the one you should be telling all your friends about that you guys I have a, a, a guy in my life I yes. my goodness the Holy Spirit is here and <laughs> anyway so what does this in uh, Ephesians 6 above all take up taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench not some of but all the fiery darts of the wicked one all without exception Some people say, even the rich cry. In other words, if you have money, you should have sadness. If your marriage is working, then your ministry shouldn't work. Because you are with the wife the whole time and you don't have time to go and preach. <laughs> The world, I'm here to chase all that corruption from your system. As for you, all things work together for your good. Everything works together for your good every day. Even now. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. So faith is critically important. And as you saw in Mark 11, 22, let's go there. I'm trying to establish the ground on which we can build. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. This was after he had spoken to a tree and dried up and they were marveling like dude you are now into you drying trees when they are still in the soil I assuredly said to you assuredly as in this one Mazimalire eh? this one you cannot we go out of it I said to you Whoever says, 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 yeah, up to now you've been polite, saying nothing, hoping for that thing to change by itself. Huh. Uh -uh. Says to this mountain, not to God. Everyone is praying about something. Why, where does it say that? Every, let me pray about it. What are you praying about? You're reporting the mountain to God. God is like, speak to the mountain. You, you're speaking to God. You see, if, if, people, th if people don't think, generally, if people don't think you, are, if you have a problem up here. Either that or you are very proud or what? You are not walking by faith. Yeah. You are not walking by faith. If everything you say is so normal and reasonable and acceptable to the general public, you say it and even people say, yeah, actually that's it. You are not, I can tell you right here, right now, you are not walking by faith. Yeah. If you are walking by faith, people will be trying to kill you like they are trying to kill Jesus or they would be so annoyed with you or they would be hating on you 
or those who love you would love you to bits because you'll be solving a lot of their problems. Are there people on this side? I'm saying, if your speech sounds normal to people, you are not walking by faith. Yeah. yeah. It's what it is. You're, not, you're only walking by faith when you're saying things which people are like, that one. <laughs> they almost wrote you off. They're like, Aliterera, you know. It's like that. He doesn't relate with reality. He's disconnected from reality. He's living in a bubble. Once they say that, then you, are, you know, now you are living like God. He's disconnected from reality. He's living in a bubble. He says things that are not as if they are. As in, it's like looking at this lady and saying, this is red. That's God for you. <laughs> this is red. Like, okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Careful. <laughs> yeah. Be removed. You are saying to the mountain, you malaria. You tumor. You spirit that chases men away from me when I'm ready to be married. Yeah? Be removed and be cast into the sea. And there's no doubt in it. Like you say it and you don't doubt it at all. Why? You've been saying it so long. It, there is no longer room for... I mean, Abraham had only... Okay, no child of promise. Only had one with a house girl. But... <laughs> every day, when they called him to eat, when they called him to go look at the animals... If they invited him for a meeting in town, they are saying, Father of many nations. Lunch is ready. Father of many nations. Do you want to bathe warm, warm water or cold water? Father of many nations. How much sugar do you want in your tea? Father of many nations. Look, I'm sure he doubted it for like the first year. Like maybe for the first month. <laughs> But after a year of calling you father, at some point you start believing it. Because you know, some of you, your challenge, by the way, this is a prophetic message. So everything I'm saying, I'm not saying it because it's written somewhere. It's because what's go, it's what God is saying to someone. Your challenge is you, you said it one, two, three times, it backfired, you felt so embarrassed, everyone called you a lunatic, and you quit. You shut up. You stopped speaking. You joined the ranks of the normal and defeated. But Abraham was told, God first talked to Abraham when he was 75. Do you know when the sun came? A hundred. Twenty-five years. How long? You, how long have you been believing that thing for? 25 minutes. And you have already changed your confession. You're like, ah, Tebikola, this thing is not working. 25 years. Not even 25 years old. Father of many nations. Told it. No, 25 years. Uh -uh. Let's say it doesn't work completely. You know, at least you go to heaven in your heart because that's what they said about those guys they said they did not receive the promise but they yeah Hebrews 11 
It's as if, because all, all of it is about Jesus. For them, they lived as if Jesus was there. And they died saying, where is this guy that was promised? But they, they rejoiced. Now, of course, your miracle will come. I don't want to, I don't want to plant and beef in you. Because even people who say, okay, let me just do it because it's the right thing to do, like those people who told Nebuchadnezzar, even if you, our God will save us, and even if he does not, we, we, he still saved them. Ah. You shall believe. Yeah. I'm here to chase and believe. Yeah, I'm not here to just preach a small short sermon. Give me five. You will believe. I'm telling you, there's so much faith. If at least you don't believe, I'm here to believe for you. <laughs> the thing, it's going to have to change. Yeah. It's going to change. Because your faith, the Bible says, Jesus taught and said, if you have faith, faith like a mustard seed. And say, if you plant it, it becomes like a what? A big tree with huge branches. One guy <coughs> decided to shake the tree. So he went and hugged it. You know, one of those big trees. And he started shaking it. Guess who was shaking? It wasn't the tree. Uh, the guy who was shaking the tree, what was shaking? He was the one shaking. You're going to build your faith until anything or anyone that tries to shake you, they will be shaken. They will be shaken. That one, I'm telling you. They will be shaken. They will realize this is a hard tree. Tough. This is too tough. Yeah. They will try you out, but they will find you to be. The, uh, yeah. They will be like, this, we chose the wrong home. We chose the wrong room. We chose the wrong church. We chose the wrong location. We chose the wrong MC. We chose the wrong business. We chose the wrong office. This is too hot to handle. Yeah, the demons will go back and say, where are you sent us? It's too hot to handle. Reassign us somewhere else. Now, let's sit down. I want to finish and we pray. Now, I told you I'm going to preach the same sermon. So, there are five points. Five consistent points. One bad one and four good ones. Okay? To outweigh the bad one. Amen. <laughs> you receive it. So the first thing is an obstacle. Obstacle. We are talking about faith. When do you need faith? Obstacle. All, all faith stories start with an obstacle. All. No one ever needed faith for nothing. It's like, you need money, but you have nothing to spend on. No, faith is to be spent on something. And the thing that you're going to spend faith on is an obstacle. Let 
the coming days, I'll be sharing with you some of the obstacles. But I'm sure you're already seeing. What I, because sometimes you think that faith works for those with no issues. Then what does it do? It's like saying money works for those who have nothing to buy. <laughs> Why would you need money if you have nothing to buy? Faith. Faith begins with God, but obstacle. You see that Jesus over there, there, there was an obstacle. He needed fruit, and the tree told him, boss, not today. And he's like, you're joking. You're talking to the wrong person. Ah! That's how you're going to respond to some of those things that are talking to you. So it starts with a, believe it or not, friends, brothers and sisters, obstacle. So if you are looking at one right now, instead of putting your thumb in your mouth and starting to cry, understand the time to apply your faith has come. Has come. Has come. On his way to becoming king of Israel, there was an obstacle called Goliath. He had to take care of it. Jesus met many obstacles. Sicknesses are obstacles. Yeah. Sickness is not of God. Sickness is here to steal your destiny and your money. Mm. So, and time. So, all and energy. And what else? And joy. And distract your day. So, it's an obstacle. It's one of the most commonly used obstacles by the devil. Yeah, to stop you from serving, from preaching, from living. It's very hard to find it. There are very few human beings who have never fallen sick. Most most human beings have had sickness. Yeah, 99 point something percent. And I am convinced that most sickness is demonic. Yeah. Most people think most sickness is natural. No, it's not. Yeah. If it was natural, Jesus wouldn't have dealt with it the way he did. He didn't go around distributing herbs. Which one was that? Try this green one. If it doesn't work, call me again. I'll bring a Kablu one. No. There was something behind the sickness. That's why Kenneth Hagin was there 55 years, no sickness. While he lived in an environment where everyone else lived and they were falling sick. Romans 8, 11. For if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Are you, are you understanding? He will give life to you. In other words, Malik, give me a high five. Don't think you have to first have to fall sick then, then whatever. No. The Holy Spirit can give life to your mortal body to the effect that then sickness is no longer allowed. Access denied. I like that. So see, that's an obstacle. Maybe you're ready to get married. You're a wonderful, beautiful, saintly sister in the Lord. And somehow all the brothers are wearing very dark shades. They cannot seem to see the obvious. You know, as a pastor, that's one of the things that I'm like, brothers, don't you see what's going on here? But that's an obstacle. You're facing an obstacle. And you know, you're going to say, but other people, why do they get it easily? 
You are not other people. Maybe now you're married, you want to have a child, one year, two, three, four, five, six. That's an obstacle. And then you're saying, Kale, there are people who are getting children, they don't even want the children. Yeah. Why is it that Abraham's children were resisted? If you think about it. Why did Isaac take so long to come? Because even the devil knew what will happen when this child comes. Why did Jacob and Esau take so long to come? Children of promise. Why did Rachel's children take long to come? Her sister was just popping them like corn. And for her, Joseph wasn't coming because there was Egypt to save. And everything was being done to make sure Joseph doesn't come. So don't just be there. Everyone else has a child. Me, I'm a, I'm a nation. No, no, no. It's time. Oh. Understand. That's just an obstacle. And the obstacle is not there to stop you. Yeah. It's going to check you. Peter says that the trial of your faith which is much more precious than gold. As in your faith is much more precious than gold. It says it will be tried. Projection team, if you type much more precious than gold, I can guarantee you will land in Peter. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than God that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Your faith may be tested. Abraham's faith was tested. Paul's faith was tested. David's faith was tested. Everyone's faith has been tested. But you have to look at the obstacle for what it is. When you're running in, in the hurdles, those races with hurdles, when they say the gun goes off and it's time to run, don't start crying. Saying, Where have they put things ahead of us? The other guys of 100 meters, they just run with nothing. Now for us, they put for us hurdles. No, look, you are in a different race. You are not in a sprint race. You are in a hurdle race. Don't be confused between your race and the one of the sprint race. obstacles. It starts with an obstacle. Yeah. There's always an obstacle. Right from the beginning, the world, it was dark and what? Void. That's the obstacle. And God had to deal with that obstacle. Dark and void. You want a beautiful universe, but all you have is dark and void. That's the obstacle. So do not misinterpret the obstacle to mean stop. The obstacle is not a stop sign. The obstacle is an advance sign. Advance past the obstacle. Some of you where you live, when you go home tonight, you'll find that the gate is closed. Don't turn around and come back to church saying I found the gate closed. No. You are going to open it and get into the house. I'm telling you, this is a, a very deep revelation. Because most people interpret obstacles for stop here. You can't go any further. No. It's time to advance using other other tools. Yeah. You thought you would just walk through but now you need tools. Are, are, we, are we together? And I want to share with you those tools. And you need to be a, a certain type of a person. I'll tell you about that. But 
So obstacle comes, and then there are only four things. I told you there are five points. The obstacle and four, four good points. The first is your faith promise. Or you could say, my faith promise. It all starts with the word. Once you find an obstacle, you will quickly find out there is already a word that has been given concerning that obstacle. Like every door has a key. Like just stand there staring at the door wondering, how do I get in? Get the key. Every room has a door. Don't be on the wrong side where the door is not and you start crying beside the wall saying, how will we ever get in here? Just go around the corner and you find there's a door there. So my faith promise is my first response to the obstacle. There is nothing you're going through for which there is no word given. Nothing. It's not there. And if they tell you this is the key and you are not interested in the key, you're going to stand in front of the door and cry. But I can tell you there is nothing. Nothing. Not sickness, not poverty, not loneliness, not nothing. Yeah, even death, there is a word. Oh, yeah. There is nothing in the there is nothing in human experience which God has not anticipated and given a promise in response to that obstacle. It's not there. Yeah. You just need to go find it and walk in it and rejoice in it. Don't stand there looking at the obstacle. Yeah. Are you are you tracking? That's the first thing. The second thing. Do you want to know the second thing? Tonight I'm just doing quick, quick. Then we'll go through the details. So, what's the first one? My faith. Promise. Against the obstacle. What does God say about it? Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be. Huh? That goes forth from my mouth. What shall, what happened? It shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. There is a thing for which he sent it. And that word shall prosper. The second one is my faith company. My faith company. Once you meet an obstacle, the first thing you know, there is a promise. The second thing you know, there is a, a company. There is a group of people. Ah. Ah. Which is, who are you hanging out with? Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron. When you're iron and you're hanging out with wood, you will not be sharpened. You'll just be cutting through it. So does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Acts 4 23, 24. Acts 4 23, 24. And being let go, these are the guys they had threatened and told not to preach. Being let go, what, what happened? They went home and decided not to preach as they had been instructed by the authorities. What does it say? They went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said, go, go back, go back. KJV. They went one, two. Uh -huh. And being like, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. What had they said to them? No more preaching in this name. Now, here is how you know you're in the right company. Look at the next verse. Next verse. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. All were in agreement, saying, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven 
and earth eh, sound of is like cow today and yeah and then they started praying this prayer by the time they were done the whole place was shaking who are you talking to about the obstacle and what is their response to go even deeper about the obstacle or is their response let's pray let's pray you need some let's pray friends my friend the ones of praying with you nothing has happened yeah you'll get pity but not answers the answer you want is not pity <laughs> the answer you want is the overcoming the obstacle and I can tell you most pity people are not faith people yeah as a rule ladies let me give it to you the people you like to hang out with are the people you shouldn't be hanging out with especially if you have an obstacle yeah, you should be going to other people who you, they don't even want to hear the detail. Eh? What? And what? Oh, let's pray. Let's pray. Put on some music. This thing must change. Eh? I know where you talk for six hours about the problem. And then you say, that's my BPF. BFF, BFF. Your BFF is your your BFF is your anti-faith company. Anti-faith. Some of you have anti-faith company. You have anti-faith company. The person you talk to and say, she clicks me. After she has cl clicked you, the obstacle is still there. You are not in need of being clerk. The woman with the issue of blood didn't want Jesus to click her. She wanted the situation to change. Jairus' daughter, when she was dead, Jairus was not looking for someone to understand his grief. He needed a dead razor. Uh, yeah, I'm preaching good. Don't shut, don't shut me down. I'm saying your desired company may not be your faith company. It may be your anti-faith company. The people you hang out with for the thing to stay the same. Yeah, you're a leper, you hang with lepers. You're broke, you hang with broke people. You're single, you hang with single people. Who is shutting me down when I'm preaching good? You're looking for a job, you hang with other people who are looking for jobs. It's time to find your faith company. If you're on a sick bed, you don't need hugs, you need healing. Are you understanding? Do you want the third, the third response? These are the appropriate faith responses to your obstacle. Is your faith, my faith promise, my faith company. The third is my faith confession. My faith confession. What are you saying? <laughs> Proverbs 18, 21. 
death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit of what you're saying. You will have what you say. Psalm 17 verse 4. Concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths. Give us KJV. I'm sure there is a certain version I'm looking for. By the word of thy lips have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. I'll research the version I want later. But what are you saying? <laughs> Lastly, it's your faith action. Your faith action. This is now when you fight the fear. What are you going to do next? My faith action. James talks a lot about faith without works being dead as in you have it but it is dead yeah how many of you want to have a dead friend like i have my friend but he's dead <laughs> what's the point of having a friend who's dead hmm? so faith <laughs> the one that overcomes our dying it's what? Dead. Why is it dead? You took no action. Why didn't you take action? You were fearing the crowd and your friends. You feared the people. Yeah. At some point, eh? You have to realize the other people you're fearing, they don't have the same problem as you. Their obstacle is not your obstacle. Eh? So as for you, your faith action. If you, weigh, you keep weighing public opinion, <laughs> yeah, a point which is I say, you know, as for my neighbor to the left and to the right, I don't know their problem, but as for me, I am extricating myself from this predicament. <laughs> are you understanding? So what are your four responses? One. Uh, you have already forgotten. My faith promise to three, four. Look, if you do these things consistently, it is impossible for the obstacle to stay standing. Yeah. It is impossible. Acts chapter 14, verse 8. Acts 14, 8. Just to show you one sample, then I share with you one thing and then we have communion and go and come back tomorrow ready to, to attack the obstacles with our faith promise, our faith company, our faith confession, and our faith what? And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting a creeper from his mother's womb who had never walked obstacle. How many of you think that's an obstacle? Yeah. Look, they don't come as commonly as that. You, it's your right knee itching. That's your obstacle. You have a red eye. 
and you're calling your location pastor about it. A white what? White poor men. Some people don't understand that language. But this is a real obstacle. <laughs> Without strength in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This is an obstacle. Yeah. I don't know what obstacles you're facing, but this one is real. Mm. And these are not forged stories. These are real stories of people who experienced this. Never walked. Never walked. That right there is a hectic obstacle for the man, for his friends, for his family. Yeah, they don't give us his age. But now imagine what his family was going through. His father and mother. Many parents that have children with disabilities, they, they feel shame, they hide them. You may not, never even know that they have that child because they always keep them away. So this young man may have gone through that growing up, the rejection. He didn't go to school like everyone else. Or if he went, he had no one to play with. And it says he was sitting. So he didn't even have a wheelchair. Okay. I don't know if there were wheelchairs back then. But every time you see an obstacle, think about the, the cascading challenges that it poses to, to that person and other people in their lives. What did the parents go through when they had a child that is crippled? Maybe they call them cursed. Maybe they say they were sinners. They had sinned something. They were not righteous. Maybe they told them God was punishing them. Some of you obstacles, people have told you God is punishing you. God is teaching you a lesson. There is a curse in your family. Someone, you know, sacrificed a goat and ate their ears. I, 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 it may sound funny, but I know I'm talking to someone. Yeah. People have convinced you that there is a divine layer of something behind the obstacle. Whether it's there or not, it's not the point. You have to just recognize the obstacle for what it is. Obstacle and start in your mind saying, we are going to go past this obstacle. There is a way around it. Or through it, or over it, or under it. I don't know. But whatever it is, we must find ourselves on the other side of it. Oh yes! Will never have anything stop you in life. Yeah. You must be fierce on the inside. Yeah. You should continue looking gentle and beautiful on the outside, but inside there must be a lion like character. Yeah. One who looks at the upside and says, This one. Yeah. We have dealt with others like this one before. You're not the first, okay? We're going past you. Thank you. Ah! I know someone's faith is rising. I know that someone is getting an answer to prayer right now about an obstacle that has tried to present itself to you but it's gonna shake 
Because it's finding you as a strong tree. First sit down. So Elystra, this man. <laughs> what did he do for a living? So when you're a cripple, mostly it's to beg. Hmm? Begging. So you are a victim. You think everyone owes you. Like, Sam, give me Sam. Also, don't you see? I'm suffering. You feel disempowered. You, you fully wear the victim clock with embroidery. Victim, victim, victim. Huh? Haven't you met people like that? Even the way they tell you the story, like this one, eh? they need a kick in the back somewhere. It's the only thing that can help them because from the way they are talking, yeah, they are not, they are not assessing the situation the way it should be assessed. Like, this thing is destroying your life. It's not time to play victim. It's time to cut a wire. <laughs> obstacle. Yeah, this is a hectic obstacle. Never walked one. Paul found himself in the midst of such obstacles. Look at him and Silas in jail. Beaten. In stocks. Midnight. You think they gave them dinner? The prisoners. Let's give them. No! <laughs> and the guys are there thinking, what's our next move? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Beaten, nothing, no rights, no food, hungry. But they are, they are just there saying, Mwana Cyrus, Tugenda Chikuba, what's next? What's next? Like little Imba. Na imbira ni mama, na imbira nga mukam, bolamu wangi. And they didn't have a band. Before you know it, the jail is shaking. Ah! You need to have that attitude. Yeah. You know, just lay down and let the devil roll over you. He will, don't think he has any mercy. He will actually roll over you. Yeah. So tell yourself, I'm not a victim. And I'm not going to take it lying down. Hey, sit down. Now, this cripple realize that this thing of being inside the house and they just bring you soup and greens and playing victim is not going to work. When he had a rumor that there were some evangelists in town, he said, I'm going. I don't know who will take me. I don't care if no one wants to take me. But here where I am, it's not working. I need a change of environment. You see, the story is so short, it doesn't tell you the details. Because in the next verse, it says, this man had Paul speaking. Paul wasn't speaking inside his room. Paul was having a public meeting somewhere. This guy, there, crippled, never walked. He decides... I don't know what it will take to go from here to where that guy is preaching, where that preacher is. But I'm going. Whatever it takes, whether I drag myself or I implore people to say, put me on a sack and carry me there, I am going to my faith company. 
His faith company was at the meeting where Paul was preaching. Not at home. <laughs> your faith company is often going to be far away from your current condition. And until you're ready to change the environment and say, I'm going to pick myself up and go where the help is. Yeah. This guy, he woke up, they told him there is a preacher. He says, I'm going. And I said, like, where are you going? What do you mean you're going? I'm going. How are you going? I'm going. <laughs> he had to faint his faith company. Your faith company will not come to you. You will have to go to them. The people who are going to help you, they are not going to come for you. <laughs> they are not coming for you. You are going. To... Mary had to go to Elizabeth. Elizabeth didn't come looking for Mary. So, when you're playing victim, you sit down, put your thumb in your mouth and say, okay, even me know I'm going to come and help me. No, they are not coming. It's just what it is. Human beings, everyone is trying to save their skin. No one is coming. Yeah, no one is coming. Yeah. You're going to have to pick yourself up and say, over there, those guys there are the people I need to hang out with for my church to grow. So, ready or not, here I come. Yeah, Many of you are running businesses that are so small, you're waiting for your mentors to find you. <laughs> go join BLN and go find your mentors. Otherwise, you're stuck with a small business. No one is coming for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. But no one is coming for you. You're going to have to go. You see that woman with the issue of blood? Jesus wasn't going around looking for her. Yeah, she said, eh? I, if, I, if I may just touch. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to find this guy. Blind but miles. He didn't sit at home saying, uh, why don't they tell Jesus to pass by our house also? No, 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 no. Jesus! Son of David! They tried to shut him down. He couldn't be kept quiet. He was like, I have found my faith company. It's now or never. Oh, yes. Are you following where do you need to go? Who do you need to find? Which group of people do you need to get attached to? You know, all the people who are doing well, they don't easily let new people into their circle. So, first of all, if you're... How do I put this? If you are not successful, but you're also easily offended, you'll be the one that... Yeah, those guys, they like each other so much. I tried to join their group. They didn't even invite me to their party. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your bad attitude is going to keep you in the wrong company. Yeah, you must be like, huh? Those guys, I'm going to quelly part on them. Until they give me a chair on that table. Yeah. You, that's how it works. Don't think successful people are going to say, my man, there is this other struggling, whatever. Let's, let's create a chair here. Let's send an emissary to find him. No, they are too busy trying to get even better than where they are. They are also looking for their faith company, which is the next level. You think they are going to move in reverse to find you? You go find them. You see, this sounds like common sense, but sometimes it's not so common. I've had to always find my faith company. 
Yeah, God can open a door for you, but then you have to go. You have to go, and you have to real go. Me, I don't do little. What? I real go and be like, now I'm part of you, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Everything you have, before you know it, I've arrived. Invited on. I don't wait for invitations. No. I just show up. I just keep showing up. Until they say, this guy... <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. yeah. Just determine within your heart that your story doesn't end the way it is now. Yeah. You're going to do something. So, this fellow, he couldn't stay at home when the crusade is in town. No, <laughs> he's like, yeah, can you imagine? And there are crowds. There's, what about if there's a stampede? And people step on you and you die. He's like, hey, if I die, I die. Yeah. It's better to die trying than die without. But I'm going. Tell your neighbor, I'm going. I'm going to my faith company. Go to your faith company. I've had to go to my faith company. You know, God opens the door, but then now you have to take your. Yeah. I had to go to Andrew Womack to be ordained. I was going to a city I'd never been to. I didn't know anyone. So I put it out, and someone, uh, you know, when you're looking, who knows someone 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 who lives in such and such a city? Yeah. Then you go. Colorado Springs. I no one. I knew. And there was a lady who knew a guy who knew a couple who lived in the city. Yeah. You know when people come to pick you at the airport and it's like they have to have a name, a placard. It's like, are you the one? Yeah. It's like, then they take you and they house you the whole week, dropping you at the conference, picking you at night. They drop you in the morning at 8, they pick you at 10 p.m. Looking for my faith company. Some of you can't even come to, to the service from just... Yeah. Look, God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that he shall reap. I know what I have sown to get where I am. I know what I have sown to get where I am. And I know what I need to sow to get where I'm going. So, you go find them. And Mark, Mike Brain, John Maxwell, Tim. Ah! Oh. Hmm. You're like, these things are expensive. Hey, you're looking for your faith company. Otherwise, you will not have Harvest Institute. If you just stay around in the company of the mediocre who think they know what they are doing. But you don't. Bishop Doug. Ah. He just put out his first two crusades. I'm thinking, I need to go at least to one of them because now. But one is those ends. The other is those ends. Going to do. That's your faith company. You're either going to Madagascar or Liberia. <laughs> yeah. Go there and start speaking your French. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Mose. Et toi? Oui. Moi. Huh? Ah. Crusade, crusade. Evangelist, evangelist. Evangelist. Faith company. Are you ready to look for your faith company? You're not 
ready to die. Don't, don't get into faith company which is in heaven. No. <laughs> anyway. Lystra, Lystra, where were we? I didn't finish. So this man had Paul speaking. Your faith promise. What was Paul speaking? The gospel. He was preaching about the goodness of God. You can check whatever he spoke elsewhere. He was always talking about the resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, and how God has made a way. And Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed as a result of the word that he was hearing. The word that he was hearing. The man started to receive faith as he was listening to Paul. Started entertaining notions of not being a cripple anymore. Ha! Ah. <laughs> That's my faith company. <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can tell you what you're listening to is determining the outcome. What you're listening to is determining the outcome. The man had faith to be healed. He had already come too far. He was like, I'm going to the crusade. And you see, he wasn't even like Paul could see him. So he wasn't too far back. He was near the front. Because says he observed him intently. Sometimes you can see that the person has got it. Ah. Next verse he said, he said with a soft voice to avoid the embarrassment in case it doesn't work. What are you saying softly that you should be saying loudly? What are you saying softly that you should be speaking loudly? But because you're fearing opinions, they say speak. Amen. No. Paul said with a loud voice, he unleashed a confession. Stand up straight on your feet. Your faith action. And he started explaining to Paul how he has been a cripple from birth, how they even tried the other doctor and it didn't work, how his mother really tried so much, how his father has to do an extra job to maintain him. Huh? How he has no wife. <laughs> what does it have to do? What did the man do? He, he didn't just stand up slowly, slowly to say, let's see, let us see, let us see. Sample. What? No! like a frog. Faith action. Tomorrow, on Thursday, on Friday, I'll be sharing more with you about the obstacle, your faith promise, your faith company, your faith confession, 
and your faith action. Why don't we stand and pray? Yes, thank you, Father. We bless your name. You're merciful. Yes, Lord. There is nothing too hard for you. Yes, Father. There is no mountain you cannot move. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no mountain you cannot move. I trust in you. You. Say that from the bottom of your heart. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no mountain you cannot I trust in you. You are my God. You. going to sing again from the bottom of your heart and the top of your voice and believe God to change whatever situation it is there is nothing there is nothing there is a mountain you can have I trust in you I trust I Father, we thank you. Every mountain, no mountain of sin, addiction, sickness, financial need, work frustration, marital delay, child conception delay, no mountain can stand against your word. So right now in the name of Jesus, I speak to what Whatever mountain you are dealing with and command it out of your way. And I declare in the name of Jesus that today you start going over that obstacle with be it sickness, be it an addiction, be it a need, be it a condition, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. In the name of Jesus. Every growth ceiling is broken in the name of Jesus. There shall be no limitations over your head in the name of Jesus. No limitations over your head. 
thank you father someone you need to forgive that's the obstacle that's the glue that's keeping you, the obstacle in place there's someone you need to forgive completely and let them go you need to forgive you need to forgive you need to forgive it's keeping you down it's keeping you from reaching where God wants you to go so let go of whatever it is thank you father just pray in the spirit pray in tongues start receiving your miracle right now start receiving your miracle of healing start receiving your miracle of deliverance start receiving your miracle of a different marriage from the one you've been experiencing because God is giving it to you God is renewing things in your life start receiving your miracle of childbearing in the name of Jesus start receiving your miracle every siege of marital delay is broken in the name of Jesus yes yes the person God has chosen for you shall manifest in the next few weeks thank you Jesus I expel every kind of sickness and every demon behind it every spirit of witchcraft yes. from every yes. place yes. be gone be gone now 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 every infirmity now 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 heart condition be healed in the name of jesus be healed every heart condition be healed be healed Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep praying in the spirit. Keep praying in the spirit. Receive your miracle, someone. Receive your miracle from God. Whatever it is. If you are sick in any part of your body, put your hand. Lay hand on yourself. Just put your hand where the sickness is. And command it to leave you. There is faith in the room right now. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Oh yes. I release resources into your businesses right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes. We open every door of opportunity that has been closed. Yes. Over your endeavors. Yes into your ministry yes yes receive it yes receive miracles financial miracles financial miracles of every kind in your work in your business yes whatever you lay your hands to do it shall prosper yes you shall prosper you shall not be small you shall not be diminished. Yes. You shall expand yes. to the left, to the right. Yes. Oh, yes. There is a lifting. You are going higher in the things of the Spirit. Your prayer life is changing. Your prayer life is changing. Someone, your prayer life is changing. Thank you, Jesus. Someone, receive the Holy Spirit. A new dimension. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome right now. Fill us afresh. New dimension. New dimension. Your eyes are being opened. Spiritual eyes are being opened. Your ears are being opened. To hear as the land. Thank you, Jesus. You will not 
be disappointed. Your faith will yield fruit. Thank you, Lord. If you're here, before we have communion, if you're here and you've not given your life to Jesus, I want to pray for you to receive Christ. Amen. Whether here or in any of our hosting centers, okay, the other locations where we are streaming, you're saying, Pastor, I want that faith. I want that confidence to walk with God. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be born again. I want to pray with you. Every head bowed. As, as, as we are all in prayer. Can I see your hand if you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Oh, you just come. Just come. This sister has opened the door for us. You're welcome. God bless you. You want to give your life to Christ. Come now. Come. Run quickly. Run quickly before we have communion. Your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Welcome. Welcome. Can I shake your hand? God bless you. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Let's welcome them. Let's welcome them. Come quickly, come quickly. Take for yourself the free gift of salvation. God is turning your life around. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Keep coming, keep coming. Anyone else? I see some people coming. Let's welcome them. Keep coming, keep coming. Tonight is a time of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Keep coming. Come, come. Come from wherever you are. Come quickly. Come and we pray together here at the front. You want to give your life to Jesus. He will turn your life around. The Bible says he beautifies the humble with salvation. At all the locations... There is a pastor at the front receiving those who are giving their life to Jesus. Can we celebrate this wonderful yeah. brothers and sisters? Can you pray with me? Just pray what I'm, I'm going to pray. The Bible says, with the heart you believe unto righteousness and with the mouth you confess salvation. So say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Say it, say it audibly. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I come to you. I come to you. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Give me salvation as a gift. Give me salvation as a gift. That I may become. That I may become. God's own. God's own. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And I will follow you all my days. And I will follow you all my days. With the help of the Holy Spirit. With the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate them as they... I want you to go with this brother. You're just going here. Just over here. We want to write your names. So that we can be praying for you. Is that okay? Oh, yes. We'll be praying for you. We'll be praying for you. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Amen. I'm going to ask you to sit very briefly so you can receive the communion because you need to hold it. Sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I'll sing praise. 
Father, we thank you for this bread and this drink. We receive it as the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus. The body that was broken, that ours may be made well. And the blood that was shed, that our sins may be forgiven. And that we may have remission of sins. We receive it by faith and declare that no one shall remain sick in this church in our midst we expel all sickness from our midst sickness I command you to leave this church now right now every single one of you kinds of diseases be gone in the name of Jesus and we receive restoration to sonship that we will know our position and whose we are and walk with confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have the bread and the drink.
Is there someone who came with any situation that you can detect physically or whichever way that something has changed? If you're there, can I see your hand? Thank you, Lord. You can detect, you can tell that something has changed, whatever it was. Okay, I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Now, bulldog faith. Don't allow any sort of symptom to convince you when it comes back. You have your promise. You have your company. Mm -hmm. Your confession and your action. So start doing things that you were not doing before. That's your faith action. Be confident about it. Amen. God will not let you down. Amen. Now what we've been doing in season 21 after we woke up to the fact is that people sow a seed into the word. So if you're interested in doing that, once I've closed, you can do that in these baskets or they'll put up a number that you can send it to if you want to do that. Otherwise, you're blessed. Tomorrow, we'll be back. In the coming days, we'll do some other different things today. We are setting up what we are going to do. We may pray for people. We may anoint some people. We may pray for different things as the Lord leads, really. And, but just to be open to what God wants to do. Amen. I hope you have, your faith is already up there. You're ready to go and take on the obstacle. Let's stand up and close this service. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you because you're faithful to us. And you have been faithful to us. So, may your name be praised. And, friends, may God bless you. May your faith be strong. May you find your faith company. May you stick to his promises. May your confession not leave you in spite of the circumstances. And may you get the courage to take the right action. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Now and forever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow at 5.